I explain, I explain to my friend when we were talking about the movie Beautiful Mind, and I told him I often talk to myself similar the way the protagonist of the movie talked to himself. Yes, I often talk to myself in a natural voice as I talk to any one of you. I call him the dark passenger of my life. Not because he gives me evil thoughts, but I only encounter him when I am alone in a room with, with lights turned off or when I am taking a long, long walk after dinner. After using Oracle database for the last 8 months, I recently had a thought to name my dark passenger. I call him Deepak Schema 2 because we both access the same database, that is our brains, in a different instance, yet we differ in our cognitive abilities and decision making. Good afternoon fellow Toastmasters, guests and my dear friends. No, I am not talking about split personalities or multiple personalities. I am perfectly honest. <coughs> Society has different names for your schema to or your inner self. Some call it its conscience. Some call it as inner self. Some even call it as a disguise of God who will who helps us make good decisions. My mother is a believer in God. She prays almost every day. She is a theist. And my father a, a, a theist. As any mathematical reduction would turn out, minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 is 0, I am agnostic. So, I decided to call the God a special engineer. He is a connoisseur of arts. He is a civil engineer for the design of human beings or beat any living things. He is a mechanical engineer. Look at the synchronization of our limbs with our body. He is an electronics engineer. Look at the design of another system and the way we feel, the way we react to, the response to external stimuli. And he is also a computer science engineer because we are all blessed with unique thinking abilities and reaction. He is an engineer and I say he, he has blessed us. It doesn't seem so right. So let me mm, modify it as he has installed us with various good features that you can make use of. Similarly, he also came up with a, I can call it a piece of code or a software which no human being has went near understanding it. It's our inner self. So, I decided to dig deep and understand what it is. The four aspects that came to my mind when I started thinking about my inner self are dreams, karma, matter and conscience. So let me talk about dreams. Dreams, people think dreams are dream, dreams are dreams are omens, warnings, a foresight of things happening in the future. Or a psychologist can say it has the reflectance of the images in your subconscious mind. For me, my, for my schema too. Dreams are nothing but a customized YouTube player. It shows me visuals which I really want to see, introspect and learn from it. Coming to the second part, the second aspect of my inner self, it's karma. Karma is like an anti, antivirus software. An antivirus software because it is an external justice system which will torment us, which will doom us to suffer if we don't my instance say do not update it. Once we have done the right things, we are not prone to any any similar situations because the karma guards us. Move on to the next one. It's matter. Matter. Paulo in, in the book Alchemist, Paulo Paulo used this word to indicate destiny. It mean it means the events of our future, the events of our life are predetermined. The book was a story about a child who explores his future, who chases his dream to find the treasure. Fine, I agree with the author. Yes, matter, maybe uh, with things, with, with uh, the experience we have, we can conclude that matter, the things are written. We can only connect the dots looking backward and not forward. But look 
at us, the prejudice in the youths are, it's a preconceivable thought we connect to a matter. Say example, my friend had a very good opportunity to get a scholarship in a very good university abroad and he decided to study for it. But later he was so lazy to do it and he missed it. And later when I asked him about it, he said, it's mapped up dude, it's mapped up, everything is written, I couldn't make it. Okay, well, anyways he got it for a good university later on. <coughs> Look at my second example. I had, we had uh, on a Sunday morning, three, two of my friends, we decided to meet together and one didn't turn up. After tens of hundreds of missed calls to him, later he picked the call and he started saying, what's up dude? We were all waiting for him and he turned, he didn't turn up. For him, not acting, not coming to the meeting or being lazy was pre-written, which is simply unacceptable. It's preposterous, it's cantankerous. So, do not make preconceived assumptions like this. Moving on to the next one, conscience. Conscience for me is like a Java language, Java software. Because it has a feature called garbage collector. For me, conscience is a refinery. Refinery of the bad deeds we have done and acting upon it. So, don't be dogmatic. Be pragmatic for the concern of your future. When it comes to life, I urge you not to make any decisions which I have told from my examples. When there is a knock on your heart and you acknowledge it, uh, it to be your conscience, please welcome it with a smile. Talk to it because it's always right. Make it your priority one, two. Talk to it and do the same thing. At last, listening to all this, the question still stands. Will you? Will you?